Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dennis here from Barista Workout and uh, I'm here with Adam Raw today for a little interview. We just finished our workout and time to ask some of those questions that a lot of people have been asking. Adam, a lot of people know about you and have seen your videos and look up to you, uh, but there are many things that people don't know. And so uh, I think this is a good way to get that information out to people. Um, so that they see what's behind you and behind everything you've been doing. So, uh, first thing I want to ask you is just uh, explain really quick um, when you started working out, why you started, and how you started. Yeah, okay. So actually, if I have to say uh, how long I work out in general, I work out eight years. But, talking about street workout, it's four years. So I started around 2010. Before, I did various sports, I'm telling this because many people think I did uh, some kind of weight, weight training, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I never did weights. I did uh, various sports with own body, like jumping, parkour, and you know some pull-ups and stuff like that. But never really weights. So uh, the like uh, the weight I built on myself and the weight I got on was all through street workout. Okay, okay. So four years ago you started. Um, yeah. Why? You know, it's. I think it's very similar in uh, every person in the game. It was uh, the videos on the internet, of course, mm -hmm. Hannibal mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. stars, you know. Uh, but also, it was uh, that uh, our neighbors in Slovak Rep Republic, actually, they started slightly, uh, slightly a bit before us, and uh, uh, we visited them and we saw little Beastem, it was something like European street workout star in those times and it gave me the most motivation, later he became my teacher and it was the biggest pulse for me to start mm -hmm. the street workout. Okay, so when you started, uh, how many, was it just you or like a group of friends? Yeah, it was basically just me and about three, four people and then, you know, people start uh, joining us and and it, it, it just basically was self-growing community. Mm -hmm. There was more people and then we started, you know, to make uh, bigger workouts all together mm -hmm. and uh, spreading our knowledge that we got from videos or from our experiences. And it was just basically self-growing. Okay, and that's at some point you started uh, Sebe Revolta, which is a yeah. organization in the Czech Republic. Yeah, that's that's our that's our main project. We started it basically uh, with uh, my friend uh, uh, Revolt. He's that's his uh, like pseudonym, you know. Uh, he's rapper. He's making music to like motivate the youth and uh, people, inspire them. And so we connected it together basically to inspire and motivate uh, young people to fight against alcohol, drugs mm -hmm. and you know those negative things in today's society. Okay. So that was the main goal and then it turned out to you know not just work out but also many aspects around like the mind, uh, discipline, consciousness and okay. all the things around. Okay. Which is what you have here on the yeah. shirt. Yeah exactly. We have the main three words which is uh, the like humble, humbleness, humility, discipline and consciousness. Okay. That's and basically saying all. Okay. That's yeah, that's some good good words to live by. And Seba Revolta means what? It's like uh, self battle against negativity and negative things inside of you or around you. Okay. So it's like uh, you are self fighting against uh, for example when you have group of people around who goes drink every like Friday or, or do some negative things you are like fighting inside of you to not do it too you know and mm -hmm. to rather uh, do your good stuff uh, like caring about uh, health food going to train going to sleep early because then you have more energy in the morning and you can do your stuff mm -hmm. and be more creative and okay stuff, you know all and these things right? okay and so this developed from you and your group of friends yeah and today Today is really massive. It was self-growing, and today we have like 300, over 300 uh, groups all over Slovakia and Czech Republic. Okay. And it's it's actually I don't even know all the people. 
who are in it okay. because we made it like uh, free you know yeah a anyone anyone can join can join yeah and it's just they name their group uh, Silver Volta group and the name of the city or mm -hmm. the village and they just do trainings workouts and we actually by this we connected whole Republic with workout, you know. That's great. That's really, really, really that, and, amazing. Yeah, and that was one of the main goals to create one big family where you imagine any city you come to, you know, there is a group of mm -hmm. Sabari Volta. And you can go and train. Yeah, you can go and train. You can, they, uh, they usually provide you, for example, when you need to sleep. Mm -hmm. They provide you with place to That's sleep awesome. and, and it's, it's just amazing. Okay, so uh, when you started, how was the situation with training parks? Uh, that's that's very <laughs> that's very big topic because uh, uh, workout parks in Czech Republic, it was desperate situation. There are cities like Brno when uh, they have uh, a lot of parks, it's okay, but mm -hmm. then there are places when it's nothing. Okay. For example, Ostrava, it's a very desperate situation. Uh, so we've been fighting for uh, workout park some time now, but I I have to say that uh, that its situation is improving because mm -hmm. as as time goes and workout uh, becomes more and more popular, mm -hmm. there are more and more companies who wanna you know like build the parks mm -hmm. and help with the situations, and as we be uh, become more known, and also also you know offices. And people around it see it. They try to like uh, help us with mm -hmm. it and provide us with some support. Okay, great, great, great. All right. Now, um, how about training? When you started training, you said you've been doing various sports. Um, what do you think was your fitness level, your strength level, and how was your physique when you started street workout? Oh, basically, uh, this this is complicated because when I started street workout. I actually was after about half a year or a year of uh, ex experimenting with my own body uh, through diet. So mm -hmm. I was after veganism mm -hmm. uh, when when I was at uh, high school, before I started veganism, I was already around 90 kilos, mm -hmm. okay? That I built through various sports and for example I did a strength tetrathlon which was uh, at, hi at high school, it was uh, uh, triple standing jump, chin ups, leg raises and bench press. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was 90 kilo already, but then through the diet I lost about 20 kilos. And when I started street workout, it's, it was actually in, in those times when I, uh, when I stopped vegan diet mm -hmm. and started uh, dieting regularly mm -hmm. again. Then I built all the muscle, maybe due to muscle memory also, mm -hmm. but I built all the muscle back through street workout. Okay. So actually... So you start, you were skinny, but you already had more muscle before. Yeah, so okay. I think there, there, there was some muscle memory, you know, okay. and the street workout just helped me to get it back, maybe with more function. Okay, so when you started, what was your training program? When I started, I took the most uh, inspiration from Little Beastem and he trained a lot of weighted calisthenics. So I did regularly just basics, you know, pull-ups, uh, dips, push-ups, squats, but I added weight on it. Mm -hmm. Even from so, the beginning? Yeah, from the beginning. Okay. I, I started at, I never did high reps. Mm -hmm. That's what I never did. I never was like... Uh, let's do 30 pull-ups or stuff like that. I always kept it around 10 but started adding weight mm -hmm. and that's what I think made me grow or uh, that's what I think is that pulse that uh, that made me like uh, build more mass than usually people do mm -hmm. because people when they start calisthenics uh, they they usually do just basics but uh, but high reps you know mm -hmm. endurance sets long sets and high reps for example they do push-ups they do 50 push-ups and stuff like that I never did this. When I did dips, I did 10, then I uh, put weight on myself, I did 10 with 20 kilo, I did 10 with, with 40 kilo, and I was building up mm -hmm. for the numbers. Because for me, uh, the strength and maximum power was always something like, you know, the goals. Mm -hmm. I, I always saw that strength as something like uh, what I want to reach. All right. But uh, you would, did you have like a certain program where you would do full body every day? 
it was complicated because at the beginning we just tried to do things with some videos yeah. and you know yeah. you are you are just playing around so I I don't even I don't even remember or I can memorize uh, exactly what I did mm -hmm. but I would say it was uh, experimenting plus maybe sometimes I had some uh, some plan and that plan was always uh, something like I came to the gym or to the park and I choose my basics which was always pull-ups, push-ups, dips and I just did about three to, three to five sets of let's say 10, mm -hmm. 10 reps and that was first we can say year it was the same and then as I started to gain strength and raise the maximum power for one rep at weight that then I started to do like moves and mm -hmm. things. I never, I, I, I did not start with moves. So for example, I was not uh, trying to learn uh, front lever at the beginning. Of course, mm -hmm. we was trying it and playing with it, yeah. but I never uh, had it as, my, as the main part yeah. of my training. Okay. It always was basics. And that's also what I recommend to people, to start with the basics, add weight on it, and when you get more basic power, you will start with the tricks and it will Itself, okay. So, uh, but regarding those tricks, let's say muscle ups or front lever, uh, did you follow specific exercises or progressions, or would you just try it at some point? Uh, some of the moves I just tried and did did them. For example, back okay. lever. When I first tried it, I did it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think human flag also. When I first tried it, I did it at least for one side, and it was. I I don't even remember uh, that the, there were times when I really like train for some move. Maybe front lever later we started with tuck, you know, with tuck mm -hmm. legs and tried mm -hmm. to do straddle one leg. Front lever maybe, but I never trained for it. Okay. It, it, it all came up from the basics. Mm -hmm. Because because uh, whole my history of street workout I do, which is those four years now, I always did weighted calisthenics. Mm -hmm. Weighted pull up, weighted dip, weighted push up. And I think that is the main and the staple thing that b that build my strength. Okay. For the moves. What's your uh, your way of doing weighted push-ups? Someone on the back or a vest? Or yeah, yeah, some someone. People on the back. Basic. Okay, yeah, that's good to have a training partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So how about nutrition? Uh, you said you've been a vegan before, so you tried many things. Uh, what is your your current approach to nutrition? Yeah, this, this is a very complicated topic because as you said, I tried many things on myself, I, I was experimenting and I, I don't like often to talk about nutrition because if I have to say everything I know, yeah, it's, it would, start yeah, it, really. I, would, I would need to start at the beginning and go, go all over those things and really it would be for a very long time. So basically I created a formula how to, in short, uh, tell people what I think is the best. After everything I came through, uh, I would say the main approach of everyone in nutrition should be to focus on whole foods. Yeah. Because maybe uh, veget uh, as I, I was vegetarian, vegan, or I tried paleo, or I tried a ketogenic diet, it's just basically just meat and fat, or mm -hmm. just protein and fat, maybe anything. The always the best nutrition that brings the best results is uh, nutrition that's based on whole foods. So you basically just choose your meals and foods from from the whole foods and from things that are in the nature mm. as a whole, mm -hmm. as a whole entity. You know, you uh, basically we can say if man made it, you, you know that. Yeah. If if man made it, don't eat it. Yeah. Okay. So so basically whole foods. That's the best thing I, I believe you can do. Okay. And you, um, you follow a specific meal plan, or do you just know these are the good foods I want to eat, without like counting calories or like weighing your food or something like that? What, what how do you do that? Well, I, uh, I never was into counting something because I think it makes things uh, too complicated. Yeah. You know, uh, but when I was on high school, and the first. Uh, like uh, trying and studying nutrition and playing with it all around I was counting a little bit mm -hmm. I, I learned about calories how much protein you need for a day to recover and build muscle how much uh, carbs you need to have uh, enough energy and stuff how much uh, fat you need to create hormones and you know 
when I had these basics I was counting and from those times I learned it it somehow you know it, it stays in your mind yeah. and now I don't even want to count but it's in my mind, mind so I, I already when I eat something or have some nutrition plan I know how much for example calories protein and, and things stuff are in it you know mm -hmm. So I don't even want to count, but yeah, yeah. but inside okay. it's counting for me. You okay, know, okay. I have like kind of a self-counting machine. All right. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you you said earlier that uh, you you got up to 97 kilos, yeah. and then now you're trying to get lower. Um, yeah. So now that you're trying to lose weight, how do you do that? You just say I eat one one uh, meal less a day, or I just eat smaller portions. How do you regulate it? Well, uh, I just eat less. Okay. That's, that's basically all. <laughs> but also, uh, it's about kind of uh, training, you know. Mm -hmm. Because when when, it, when I focus just on strength and I keep reps really low and really long uh, rest periods and I don't pump, mm -hmm. then I don't grow. I don't uh, put weight on. Because uh, I think I have my own te uh, theory. I think uh, uh, muscles grow when you pump them. Mm -hmm. When you are constantly pushing blood into them, that's why I think, uh, for example, Americans or American street workout, they are much bigger and have uh, much higher weight in general, you know, mm -hmm. because they are doing sets and reps and routines and they are constantly pushing, pushing, pumping with the high reps and with routines. And of course, more blood you uh, you push into your muscle, that muscle will start, mm -hmm. you know, growing because it want to be bigger to get. In, uh, to in, in the next workout so it can take more more and more blood mm -hmm. so I think it's uh, it's a lot of this blood issue you know it's about how much blood you put inside how much you pump then you grow so actually I'm not pumping at all you do lower reps I do so lower reps with with, uh, with uh, long rest in between no pumping at all no going to failure because if you go to failure you, you tear you tear the fibers in the muscle mm -hmm. and you are like uh, that's the pulse for muscle to grow, yeah. you know. So no pump, no going to failure and eating less in general, that's everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, you said, we all spoke um, about your training when you started. What is your training when you, nowadays, like, does it, is it the same thing? Do you split it up? Do you have push-pull, full body? What does it look like? Yeah, now I, I do split for lower and upper body. Okay. Uh, before, what I did, I was always sli uh, splitting pushing and pulling. For me, in workout, it's it's the basic split because pushing are things like push-ups, handstand push-ups, planche, you know, things when you push your body from mm -hmm. the ground, you know. Yeah. And pulling, it's everything basically on the bar when you pull your body up. So it's like front levers, one arms, uh, pull-ups, muscle-ups, and stuff stuff like that. I always did this uh, and uh, split it for pushing and pulling because my main uh, things was weighted dip and weighted pull up and it's very hard to do weighted dip and weighted pull up in one day if you really want to grow uh, strength so I always was splitting but now because I can't sometime train weighted dips uh, as I would like to because I had some shoulder issues and some things around it uh, I train mainly weighted pull ups and that's why I put it all together mm -hmm. because for pushing I do now just planche push ups, handstand push ups and push ups okay it's basically all okay. And what about legs? For legs I, I do a uh, basic squat which is calisthenics for me and when I add weight on my back it's weighted calisthenics for me too. That's so I do weighted squat and uh, with body weight I do pistol squats and it's variation with uh, jumping. Pistol squats, jumps, of course, tried before. <laughs> of course I love uh, standing long jump so that's a yeah. that's staple of my leg routine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So, um, what recommendations could you give to someone who's starting out and who looks up to you and says, uh, I want to be like you, what, what should my training program be, um, what should my nutrition be, like, just like one sentence yeah. as a tip. Yeah, it, it always uh, would be to start with and continue doing basics, at least one year or more. Because basics are that uh, what builds everything. I believe basics and later weighted basics are the most important part of street workout. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Because if you start with uh, with moves and you are not experienced or you are inflexible or you have some 
other issues mm -hmm. that can you know block you, mm -hmm. you will injure and and or you will have some problems and it will stop you from progress and it will be just not good. Yeah. If you start with basics, it's very low risk of injury, and you will be <laughs> stronger. Yeah. yeah, you will be stronger day day by day, and and it will come. Okay, all right, great. Um, then you also you you started the whole movement in Czech Republic. You also did some uh, events and competitions, um, and there's been a lot of debate about events, competitions, and uh, people s saying that you know you don't like the competitions uh, for the federation and this and that. So uh, can you just give a little bit of, of, of background info about what that whole yeah. debate was about? You know, uh, is that I always said that I don't like uh, gymnastics like concept of street workout. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, it's like <laughs> putting too much of uh, fr of gymnastics into the street workout. Yeah. Because for me street workout is something that uh, that was created or or you know that have its roots on the street. Yeah. And it should be due to that it should be for everyone. And if you put some moves that are, for example, uh, easier to do just for some some people. Yeah, you exclude everyone else. Yeah, you yeah. Exclude, exclude everyone else. And and why why would we do that in street workout when it's supposed to be for everyone? Uh -huh. And uh, then the issue become how to do it, you know, so it can be fair for everyone. And it's very hard to, yeah. because yeah. street workout is working with your own body. And of course, uh, taller and heavier the body is. The, uh, the heavier is uh, mm -hmm. the workout itself. Yeah. So uh, I am like uh, my only way how to solve this problem is create uh, weight categories mm -hmm. or do not do competitions at all. Yeah, do just some meetings or something when it's only about fun and enjoying the workout itself. And as I see now, the movement is big. It's like evolution. It's evolving. And I never liked uh, the concept of competitions because even today we can see on competitions there are nearly no heavyweights. And why it's so? Why would they even come there when they have no chance to compare? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so I don't like this excluding of them. You know, it's. I think it can be maybe made a little bit better, but also I have to say it's very hard to. Yeah, in fact. So I don't judge it anymore. Yeah. I, I try not to judge it anymore. And I will just wait, and we will just see how yeah. it evolves in the, in the fact, future. In fact, we just had you as judge at the King of the Bar competition at FIBO. And yeah, it you, was very hard. Exactly, you see how... Absolutely hard. Really. Yeah, because in fact, uh, the idea is also that judges keep in mind if someone is very light and someone is heavier. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also talked earlier about different concepts, how you can make it fair, but of course, it's something that has to be developed. Um, but you had the idea first of having weight categories, yeah. which is one way uh, to make it, you know, to make more of a level field, um, and also to include power comp or uh, legs and and uh, weighted and weight, competition. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, that was uh, also uh, what has been done uh, by the at the World Championship uh, when it started. But the experience was that uh, spectators, it was boring to just yeah, see and, people and do max reps. How about uh, when you did your battle? How was the experience of people watching, you know, pistol squats and weighted pull-ups? Was it was were it, was there any interest from from the spectators? Where because uh, because we we put this information out before, it was quite okay because mm -hmm. because uh, the people who wanted that just came for it. Yeah. You know? Okay. So they liked it, and of course there were people who who just didn't care, but <laughs> you know it's always like that. You will always have people who are uh, who are not satisfied yeah. with with the satisfaction, and then you will have people who will enjoy it. So, r really, I agree. It's hard to like do it perfect. Yeah. But uh, we try to like here in Czech in Czech Republic, we try to be as most complete as we can. Mm -hmm. So everybody can come. Everybody can find his, you know his way of training or express himself and we try to do not exclude anyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so this is the way street workout should be. I think uh, it should not exclude anyone and uh, it, it should try to be as complete as it can. Okay. Yeah. That is that is a good approach and of course 
you you you've seen it yourself when you start doing an event or something you make many mistakes and then you of learn course, from it yeah. and so you say okay next time we're gonna do it like this we're gonna do it like that that's why I completely understand now that we cannot judge uh, the organization so far and we really need to give it more time and try to find out it, it's just I want to prevent street workout turning the wrong more, direction, yeah. you know and and turning it more into gymnastics mm -hmm. because then what then what then it's the same yeah because if, then, then, if you bring a gymnast he's gonna win <laughs> yeah of course man. I, I want to say then it's like if it's about moves and elements only and there is no creativity or no like uh, including heavy weights because look at uh, gymnastics pro yeah. gymnastics there is no heavy weight at all yeah because th they would have no chance yeah but street workout should be I feel different it should be for everyone mm -hmm. even heavyweight can show some qualities mm -hmm. you know yeah 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 that's true well we we try to prove that yeah we try to prove that at all <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, so what's what's the plan? What's next? Uh, what's the next project? Uh, what can we expect in the future? Well, uh, I hope Severo Volta will grow. I hope we will uh, we will connect more and more people. Keep connecting. Also connecting with other countries. For example, now we got a really good connection with you. I hope there will be more events. Now the the upcoming event is uh, Czech workout battle. Uh, 2014 that will be for June we are organizing it with Lada and Xion and we will see yeah okay well look also look also, that. also Slovakian street workout challenge that, okay. that's uh, international level last year we had some some people and very good bar athletes from other countries so that is big event too and we will see all right okay so a lot of stuff to be planned also in July we're gonna have the World Cup uh, in Stuttgart, Germany. So maybe uh, let's see if we can bring some people over for that. Uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening. So just stay tuned. Um, you have your own uh, YouTube channel, yeah. uh, your Facebook page, so people can connect with you there. Mm -hmm. um, you probably already get a lot of questions, so I'm not I'm not gonna encourage further questions. Just leave comments. Uh, just leave comments under the videos if you yeah. have any questions. Um, other than that. Um, I hope we'll we'll see you again soon. Yeah, and, I hope so too. And good luck so It was far. very nice talking to you. Yeah, right. Thank you. basically self-growing okay and that's at some point you started uh, Sebe Revolta which is a yeah. organization in the Czech Republic yeah that's that's our that's our main project we started it basically uh, with uh, my friend uh, uh, Revolt he's that's his uh, like pseudonym you know uh, he's rapper he's making music to like motivate the Alf and uh, people inspire them and so we connected it together basically to inspire and motivate uh, young people to fight against alcohol, drugs mm -hmm. and you know those negative things in today's society. Okay. So that was the main goal and then it turned out to you know not just workout but also many aspects around like the mind you know some pull ups and stuff like that but never really weight. So uh, the like uh, the weight I built on myself and the weight I got on was all through street workout. Okay, okay. So four years ago you started. Um, yeah. Why? You know, it's. I think it's very similar in uh, every person in the game. It was uh, the videos on the internet, of course, Hannibal <laughs> and the stars. You know. Uh, but also, it was uh, that uh, our neighbors in Slovak Rep Republic actually they started slightly, uh, slightly a bit before us and uh, uh, we visited them and we saw little Beeston it was something like European street workout star in those times and it gave me the most motivation later he became my teacher and it was the biggest pulse for me to start mm -hmm. the street workout okay so when you started uh, how many was it just you or like a group of friends 
yeah, it was basically just me and about three, four people, and then you know people start uh, joining us and and it, it, it just basically was self-growing community. Mm -hmm. There was more people, and then we started, you know, to make uh, bigger workouts all together, mm -hmm. and uh, spreading our knowledge that we got from videos or from our experiences. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dennis here from Barista Workout and uh, I'm here with Adam Raw today for a little interview. We just finished our workout and time to ask some of those questions that a lot of people have been asking. Adam, a lot of people know about you and have seen your videos and look up to you, uh, but there are many things that people don't know. And so mm. uh, I think this is a good way to get that information out to people. Um, so that they see what's behind you and behind everything you've been doing. So, uh, first thing I want to ask you is just uh, explain really quick um, when you started working out, why you started, and how you started. Yeah, okay. So actually, if I have to say uh, how long I work out in general, I work out eight years. But, talking about street workout, it's four years. So I started around 2010. Before, I did various sports. I'm telling this because many people think I did uh, some kind of weight, weight training, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I never did weights. I did uh, various sports with own body, like jumping, parkour, and 